Hello guys, welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to check for the best IDE for Python programming. So IDE, IDE is Integrated Development Environment. And basically an IDE, you use it to Use an IDE for your development, for your programming. We are working on large projects, or as the case may be, small scripts. So, in this video, we're going to look at Majorly, Sublime, Visual Studio Code, and PyCharm. So, I think these are the three most popular IDEs when it comes to Python. And um, I've worked uh, with different level of experience with them so first let's check out sublime so sublime why i like sublime is sublime is very lightweight when you want to work with sublime it's very fast you click it it opens up in a short time and then it has all these options it has your sidebar you can quickly go through your code it has it has a mini map i don't know what that useful for anyway or well, it's there and most times when i'm working i block it out well all the same it has a console and generally i just like it it supports a lot of languages it has preferences uh, teams you can work with a lot of things and then it has this package control which has a lot of packages for different uses. So the ones I have used over time is, although not for Python anyway, but here, these are the ones I've used on Beautify and Beautify. So the truth about IDEs are, depending on your the extent of your use, that's um, how far you actually research them and then try to get more from them but the major selling point for sublime is the fast the speed it's very fast and then you can quickly open it up and get stuff done in a short while that's sublime i use it when i ever i need to quickly put things together so that's why I, when i use sublime so next up is visual studio code Visual Studio Code is um, created by Microsoft and over time it started becoming very very popular and um, and one thing about Visual Studio Code is one, one of the first selling point for me actually is this split screen like you can work in on something here and then working on another file instead of opening two different windows although the latest version of Sublime, I think it has the same feature, but it's not well advertised, so to speak. Like, it's not conspicuous, it's hidden somewhere in the menu. But for just to do code, that's one thing I like there. And then, one thing I don't like coming from, um, coming from Sublime is this explorer. The, the files are usually in blocks compared to sublime where you just have it like like this i don't know maybe because i've been using sublime for a longer period of time but i guess it was just strange i guess maybe this bar but anyways that was one of the things that first put me out for just to do code but overall it's actually very powerful you have a lot of add-ons i can search and is in constant development and then you can see with the massive adoption of it, and a lot of people are trying to use it. And then, majorly at the end of the day, whichever IDE you use is your code that matters, is your code, what you're doing. But your ID actually goes a long way in helping you to um, to complete your tasks. So one of the okay, one of the general uh, advantage that um ids have over like a text editor such as notepad is 
is that you you have your syntax highlighting. That's the first thing. So if you're someone that coming from HTML or something, you, you the first thing you notice is when you when, when you are working with when you are working with Python that and you are doing your work with IDEs is syntax highlighting. That's the first thing. So over this one is the syntax highlighting. Okay, so strange enough, sometimes when I want something very, very lightweight or I just want to focus only on Python, I actually use the Python shell. So the Python shell is just this thing like Python. You can do some work in here and get results. You can run your shell, you can create a new file. Very, very basic actually when you're working with Python but sometimes I find myself actually using the Python shell as against using Sublime for very very small scripts when I just want to be working and testing at the same time so that also comes in handy anyways whichever ID you are using your ID will actually be working with your Python installation and then the I, this idea here he has integrated development environment it it works it comes out of the box with your python package so sometimes i find myself using it One other package I use a lot is Jupyter, Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Notebook actually comes with Anaconda. So Anaconda is guided as the world's most popular Python or R data science platform. Anyways, Anaconda comes with a lot of packages and the one that I found most useful as, it, as an editor of some sort is Jupyter. So why I use Jupyter is the the way it works it allows you to it allows it allows you to work differently it works differently from other IDs like it being it majorly focus on data so when I'm working with something that okay doing some pandas work or working with CSV or anything data science Sometimes you are trying to figure out how to do something and then you don't want to run through the code every time. You want to store some parts of the code. So it actually comes in very very handy. So working with my pandas, working with numpy and all that. So it's actually very very cool. So when when I'm when I'm working, you can run different cells at different times. So it actually doesn't run through the code you have to type in your cells and then come in okay i want to run this first so then you check for your results for the manipulation or whatever you're doing so and it's very helpful at times so that's jupyter so just like jupyter something you can use um, on the web is google collab it's basically for me, it's basically like Jupyter from Google, basically, and then it has a lot of um, data science or machine learning things. I've not really dove into it so much, but it's really cool, really cool. So one other noteworthy IDE is at home. So I don't have it installed, but it's like the cool the website is really cool, and then the UI very nice. And you download it, the color scheme, everything is cool. You can see this really pretty. You can use it for Python as well, but I don't have it installed. Well, you can you can use it and then 
give some feedback in the comment section and let us know how your experience with Atom has been. I've actually used it once or twice, but I don't have an array of IDs and want to work and I'll start picking. So basically, okay, the last, the another one is PyCharm. So PyCharm is by JetBrain. JetBrain is the makers of um, IntelliJ IDE. So PyCharm is on quarters is regarded as the best Python IDE. But for me, the major drawbacks is okay, it takes a lot of time to load. And it also takes a lot of resources. So some people complain about Google Chrome um, taking a lot of resources in their system. So for me, PyCharm is like the Google Chrome of Python IDs. Once you run it, you can really see in your resources when you go to Tag Manager. It's sucking up those resources, it's taking up all the space. And then I then look at it now, okay. Using PyCharm for a small script and then it's taking over my system so majorly that's my my um, single drawback for PyCharm I think it's very beautiful it's it really for the fact that it is specially for Python I think it has a lot to offer I've not done work extensively with it one other thing I noticed the focus is on projects, projects, projects. When you're working in PyCharm, it, it starts to look like, even though it is, it is this IntelliJ IDE, the same IDE he used in Android Studio, but you just get the feeling that, okay, this thing is Android development. If you've, any, if you've done any kind of Android development, the way it's going to be loading, you're going to feel like this is Android development compared to other IDEs that once you open them, you find your scripts, you find your folders, you find whatever it is you are doing immediately. You can see here this is loading this, loading that. Before starting this, I already created a project. So, but you can see it's just loading. It takes a while. So, that's my drawback for it. It has a lot of cool features, obviously. But for me, those are the drawbacks. You can you can run your software if you if my script was written already you can just come here run click run then it goes so that's well I just get a feeling of Android Studio all over it so well that's my charm so for the IDs that I've reviewed, I'm going to give the crown to Visual Studio Code. I believe Visual Studio Code is the best ID for Python. Basically because PyCharm takes a lot of resources and a long time to load. Aside that, I would have chosen PyCharm. With Visual Studio Code, when you run it, it doesn't take a wire system, it's just there one of the hubs not taking too much resources and then it works so that's my reason for choosing Visual Studio Code but whichever one you use I guess it is the code that is most important and then for different reasons you're going to find each one useful so there are some things I want to do that I would definitely go to Jupyter there are some things I want to do that I hope one ideally first the so things I want to do, just small edits, I open Sublime, and maybe when I'm working with Django or project-based software, I go to Visual Studio Code. So, I might be biased because I've not worked so much with PyCharm, and also for the fact that PyCharm kind of looks like Android Studio, so, and the way it loads actually, the way it loads, just loading and loading, whereas other IDs you just click and open and you have your code and, get, and you can get to work. So that's my take on IDs for Python programming. So see you now, another one. You can subscribe to my channel for more videos and 
you can also come around and comment and state your views and reasons why a particular IDE is your favorite IDE for programming in Python. So, see you now, no one.